So you want to know what exact type of bird seed you should get for your feeder to attract certain types of birds. Well, in this video, I'm going to go through all of the types of bird seeds out there and what types of birds they attract and also some things that you really got to watch out for, not only for your bird feeders, but also for the health of the birds themselves. Coming up right after this. Hello guys, my name is Eddie. I am a wildlife biologist. And in case you have not watched my channel before, I happen to be a huge birder. I am a huge bird nerd. I have gone on a lot of birding trips all over the world. But one thing that I always love doing is watching birds at bird feeders. And honestly, I think whether you're a serious birder or someone who just doesn't really know anything about birds, I think that having a bird feeder in your backyard is a great idea just to connect with birds, to connect with nature. And honestly, I think there's just a limited reasons to observe birds at a feeder in a backyard. One reason is they've actually done studies that have shown that observing birds can actually just put you in a better mood and just increase your happiness. So if you're thinking about getting a bird feeder and putting it in your backyard, you might be wondering what type of bird seed you should get because if you go to a store to buy bird seed, there's lots of different kinds of bird seed. And it is actually really important to know what type of bird seed you should get so you can attract certain kinds of birds to your feeders that you might want or that you don't want. And you also have to watch out for the health of the birds themselves because if you feed birds the wrong type of bird seed or in the wrong way, then it can really be unhealthy for them. So I'm just gonna go through all the different types of bird seeds, the types of birds that they're good for and things that you should watch out for. So let's get into it. So we're gonna start off with sunflower seeds, which probably attracts the widest diversity of birds. What a lot of people don't realize is there's actually two types of sunflower flower seed that they sell there's black oil and they're striped and the black oil sunflower seeds have really thin shells and pretty much most all species of birds that visit feeders can crack them open striped sunflower seeds on the other hand are much harder to crack to crack open because uh, they have a thicker shell now one species that a lot of people don't want at their feeders are the eurasian house sparrow in case you don't know this is probably the most widespread species in north america it was introduced from europe honestly at this point they're like pests there's probably too many of them and a lot of people just don't want them at their feeders and generally from what i know house sparrows have a tough time cracking open striped sunflower seeds another bird that has a tough time cracking open the striped sunflower seeds are red-winged blackbirds I think red-winged blackbirds are beautiful, but a lot of people don't want red-winged blackbirds at their feeders either. So if you don't want red-winged blackbirds or house sparrows, go with the striped sunflower seeds. Now, one animal that does love sunflower seeds are squirrels. So just know that if you have sunflower seeds in your feeder, then you know that will be attractive to squirrels. Although a lot of bird feeders are pretty good at deterring squirrels as well. And then another thing I will add as well is that you can also buy sunflower seeds without the shell. A lot of species of birds like this, but it is more expensive. But the thing that you have to know that is really important is that without the shell, the seeds can quickly spoil. So you don't wanna leave seeds without a shell for more than a day, because when they spoil, they can potentially have dangerous bacteria on them, which is potentially dangerous for any birds that eat them. The next type of bird seed I will talk about is safflower. Safflower has a thick shell, so it's definitely tough for some species to crack open. I've always thought that the house sparrows can't eat these, but apparently I've heard that they can eat them at some feeders. European starlings also, from what I know, tend to not like safflower. And actually squirrels tend to not like it either. And in my experience, some species that really love safflower are cardinals, grosbeaks, chickadees, doves, and also a lot of native sparrows. The next type of bird seed I'll go through is thistle, which these are these thin black seeds and small finches love thistle seeds. So for example, American goldfinches, lesser goldfinches, indigo buntings, pine siskins, common red poles, all these guys love 
these seeds. Now suppliers used to sell an old type of thistle that it's actually gone invasive and apparently it's become somewhat of a problem in North America. So now they sell a new kind called Niger. And this is just a fun fact about this. Apparently they're heat sterilized, so they're unable to germinate when after they're brought over here from overseas. So they can't go invasive. So I just thought that was interesting. The next type of seed I'll go through is white millet. Now a lot of ground feeding birds love eating white millet for some reason. So this includes quails, a lot of different sparrows, doves, towhees, juncos, and also cardinals. Now, unfortunately, cowbirds, specifically brown-headed cowbirds, love white millet. And we all know brown-headed cowbirds are one of the species that we have to control because due to habitat alterations, brown-headed cowbirds have spread to places that they shouldn't be, and unfortunately, they are negatively impacting other species of songbirds. At the end of the day, that is our fault. That is the fault of humans. But because of this, a lot of people don't want brown-headed cowbirds at their feeders. Other blackbirds and house sparrows also love white millet. I would say if there's not too many brown-headed cowbirds around, then feel free to use white millet to feed some of these ground-feeding birds. But just know that a lot of these birds are also attracted to sunflower seeds as well. The next seed that we'll talk about is corn. Just right away, I'm gonna say for a bunch of different reasons, it's probably not the best idea to use corn at your feeders. There's tons of species that love corn. For example, grouse, pheasants, turkeys, quails, cardinals, grosbeaks, crows, ravens, jays, and just much more. But the first problem with it is corn attracts a lot of other birds and just other types of animals, including mammals, that you really should not be attracting by food to your backyard. So not only does it attract cowbirds and house sparrows, but it attracts squirrels, but also it can attract stuff like bears and raccoons. For various reasons, you do not want to be attracting bears to your backyard by feeding them. Also, corn can attract deer to your backyard, which I would also not suggest. But another problem with corn is that out of all the types of birds see out there, corn are a lot more likely to be contaminated with these toxins called aflatoxins. And aflatoxins are these toxins that are produced on fungi that are found on a lot of types of crops out there. And this can be really toxic to birds, even at pretty low levels. So while I suggest not using corn, if you do use corn, some things that you should take caution of are never buy it in a plastic bag, don't let it get wet, and you know, just don't use old corn too. Just make sure it's new and fresh. And also never buy corn with red dye because oftentimes corn is treated with fungicide, which fungicide can be really toxic to not only birds, but everything else. And corn that has fungicides is marked with this red dye. And of course, never offer the type of corn that you would eat for butter popcorn either. The next type of seed that I will talk about are peanuts. Now, as a human, I love peanuts. I love peanut butter and a lot of birds do too. But just like corn, peanuts can also have these aflatoxins in them. So you need to be sure that number one, they don't get wet and that they're used up quickly. So one general practice, not only with peanuts or corn, but with all bird seed is you got to make sure that your bird feeder is being changed and cleaned out on a regular basis, especially if it rains and gets wet, because whenever it rains and gets wet, that's when bad stuff for birds like fungi can grow in there, bad bacteria can grow in there. The next type of seed we'll go through is is Milo. And if you live in the western part of the United States, some ground feeding birds in the west actually really love Milo. They've done studies on this. Species that love Milo are Stellar's Jays, Curve Build Thrashers, Gambles Quails, and some others. And apparently house sparrows don't eat Milo. That's what I researched. And then next, there's also rapeseed and canary seed, which as far as I know, there's not that many birds that actually eat rapeseed and canary seed. I know a few of them are quails, doves, some finches, and some juncos. I've actually never had a bird feeder where I've used rapeseed or canary seed. Most stores I go to, they don't even sell it. However, I have heard that rapeseed and canary seed are also popular with cowbirds and house sparrows. So maybe sunflower seeds are just a better choice anyway. And last, I'm gonna go over some seeds that you gotta watch out for because a lot of times they will sell seed mixtures that have a bunch of types of seeds in that mixture. And what you wanna do is you wanna look at all the seeds that are in that mixture. And if they have any of these kinds of seeds, you want to avoid that mixture. And those are gold millet, red millet, and flax. So if they have any of these seeds, you wanna avoid that mixture because 
these are seeds that birds actually, as far as I know, they don't eat them. Uh, they're just used as filler in the seed mixture. But the problem with having extra seeds in a seed mixture that are not eaten by the birds is those seeds will tend to sit there and just get old. Now, you can probably uh, help avoid this if you change out your bird feeder, but often what happens is these filler seeds become waste seed way more easily, and it just becomes a breeding ground for bacteria that is, again, potentially bad for birds. Hopefully if you're in North America and you're looking to get a bird feeder, now you are well versed on what types of bird seed you wanna get. I post lots of content about birds, birding, exploring nature, health and wellness. Just remember that exploring nature is always an adventure, even if it is just observing birds in your backyard. So take that green pill, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.